Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. It is Thursday, June 13th. Our devotions are coming from the Bible Promise Book Devotional for Women. And we are in week 24 of the year 2024. And our focus for week 24 is gentleness. Our devotion today is entitled, Stop the Hypocrisy. And our scripture comes from the book of James, chapter 3, verse 17, out of the New American Standard Bible. And it reads, The wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering without hypocrisy. There's a reason the book of James is one of my all-time favorites. Okay, let's get into this. <clears throat> Gentleness is a byproduct of wisdom. Let me just say right now, if you haven't already started a habit of reading a proverb a day, because there's 31 proverbs and you could easily read a proverb a day every month and go th read through Proverbs 12 times a year. I strongly recommend it. It's not dull. It's not boring. The Lord always pulls something out of it. And I find often, more often than not, as I'm reading, my heart is crying out and praying for the Lord to give me wisdom, good sense, good judgment, all those things. Okay, not just for me, but then I'm praying, Lord, your word says, you know, look and see how the wicked are punished. Oh, that's in Psalm 91. Okay, but you know what I'm saying. And I'm like, Lord, do as your word says, so that the wicked would not get away with this, with the things they've been doing. But often reading the word, it something new pops out at me like I've never seen it before. So I strongly recommend a daily dose of wisdom in the morning. Read a chapter of Proverbs every day. There's 31 at the end of the month. If there's not 31 days, just read extra. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Wisdom also delivers the qualities of purity, peace, and a personality that's easy to get along with. Wisdom shows mercy and relies on a sure and steady moral compass. Wisdom is a good thing and a God gift. It's possible to fake these qualities for a limited time. Put on a show, wear the mask, you know, to impress people. Yeah. You might behave uh, pretty godly in the right crowd for a while. The switch of peace, knob of mercy, and touch screen of purity can read all systems go. But in your own strength and with enough time, you'll fail to continue acting out these traits. God calls this hypocrisy. If you're doing anything in your own strength to show what a good, pious person you are. And this was something that my husband struggled with in his early walk with Christ. He's one of those grab the bull by the horns kind of guys. And I've told you this before. My daughter, uh, Sarah, is the same way. They see a project. They tackle it. They're tenacious. They go for it. And they don't stop until they've mastered it, which is a very good quality given to them by God. But sometimes with that quality can come a little bit of pride and a little bit of self-reliance instead of allowing the Lord to work in them and through them, they're going to problem solve the issues they struggle with on their own. And you can only do that for so long. Your flesh can only sustain the act for so long. You're not fooling anybody. Okay. If you could discipline yourself out of sin, God gets no glory. All right. There, there is a certain level of self-control required in your flesh as you're resisting and taming that flesh. Okay. But God is the one who transforms you from the inside out. So your desire to sin is not there anymore. Okay. You can resist the urges and discipline yourself. But if the inner core of your being still wants to do those things, you haven't been transformed. Do you see what I'm saying? 
So there's a huge difference. When you're transformed, the natural expression, you know, you've given your heart to the Lord. You've asked him to change and transform you from the inside out. So the natural desire to do those things in the flesh is no longer there. Temptation might present itself to see if it can get you to slip back in. The devil's always going to try and do that. But your desire and your heart is turned towards the Lord and you no longer want to do those things. So resisting them becomes easier. Whereas if you haven't been transformed, you're just fighting against your own flesh. And anybody who's ever been on a diet knows that they can sustain some things and resist some things for a while. But after a while, come on, anybody who's ever been on a diet, you guys know. That's why it's so important to say, Lord, you need to change the things in me that need to change. Transform them, reveal them to me, show them to me so I can lay them at the foot of the cross because I want to be like you, not like me. You don't want to live in hypocrisy. Nobody does. But guess what? I've heard some people say, I'm not going to church because it's full of hypocrites. Well, at least the hypocrites are there so they can hear the word of God. Okay, better to be there where God can transform them, where they're hearing the word, than stay away from the word, stay away from fellowship. Okay, but I get it. I get it. You have people who say one thing and do another. That's hypocrisy and that that doesn't fly. You don't like to have others see you as a failure. So you try to impress them. Anybody? Only to be caught in the state of being human. Far better to let God's spirit develop these traits so you don't have to claim to be wise, you will be. When you allow God to do the work, it's so much easier, so much easier than trying to do it yourself. Gentleness shouldn't be a byproduct of personal effort. Gentleness lives in peace, seeks out the reasonable, and chooses mercy. Gentleness shows that God's wisdom still finds a home in the heart of the faithful, and he's still working on you and me. I need the Lord every day. I need him every day. I face things every day. And if I don't have him leading and guiding me, I'm going to make a mess of it for real. <laughs> I thank him every day that he takes the time to be with me and to change and transform me. That he would even bother to make the effort humbles me. But he loves me and he loves you. So let's pray. God, I'm so glad that you're unwavering in your love for us. Help me, oh God. You might be unwavering, but I can be tossed back and forth and I want the steadiness, the anchor of your Holy Spirit keeping me. I want to be consistent in my walk with you, consistent in my expressions of love and gentleness to those around me. I ask for and receive your grace today in every thought, word, and action. And through that, Father, let the gentleness of your Holy Spirit be expressed to others. Take charge of my life, Lord, and help me to be a steady, faithful, godly witness for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you and thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I do hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Come back, check out some of the other content I have on my channel. Um, today, I know that I'm going to be recording another story for my story time with Gigi. It's just really hot and muggy today. So I put my hair up. Oh, this is a gardenia from my yard. We planted it last year. It smells so good. Oh my gosh. And a friend of mine on Facebook has apparently a huge gardenia bush because she had a, a, just a, a beautiful harvest of flowers on her table. And I was like, oh, I can't wait for the day. I went out there and I happened to see that there were two flowers on my gardenia bush, which thrilled me to bits because that's why I planted it was for the flowers and the beautiful fragrance. So I picked it and decided to put it, uh, put one in my hair today. 
which I have up off my neck because I'm hot. May not be the most flattering of hairstyles, but there it is. Okay, so I've got a busy day today of work, and then tomorrow is flag day, and I'm going to be attending a beautiful uh, commemorative ceremony at the MacArthur Memorial in Norfolk here, and I'm really looking forward to that, so I've got to select my outfit carefully for tomorrow, but um, I hope you guys involve yourself in some kind of celebration for our wonderful flag. It represents so much. So many people are brought to tears when they see that flag. And it was my ancestor um, by marriage, Francis Scott Key, wrote the Star Spangled Banner upon seeing that uh, flag still waving at Fort McHenry. So that's an amazing story. You guys should look that up. It's an incredible piece of history. So inspiring. And it's still to this day. I love our flag. So God bless you guys. Have a wonderful Thursday and bye until next time.